Good evening, and welcome back to the Wilhelm Starten. Tonight we're back with more Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, excuse me for a moment, and I will post a notification, and then we can get this train a-rolling. Uh, be back soon. And we're back. Thanks for your patience. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Chapter. Oh, wow. Chapter six already. Shit. Huh. Oh, boy. I remember this one being uh, a bit of a pain to navigate, too. Ugh. Also, um, sorry to date the stream. I mean, besides the besides the stream title. But uh, I need to I need to take a moment for this. Well, I'll I'll wait till the next cutscene so that pausing it cuts the music. But there's some uh, recent news that I feel I need to talk about for a little bit. got plenty of phoenix downs damn oh well Yeah, that is uh awfully delicate. Section G's wow. through here, huh? This is all the way this is all on the way to Wow. Mm. Is there anything over here to look at or no? Okay, yeah, there is. Okay, that's bright. But then again, it is, uh... Like, those lamps straight up substitute for sunlight. So... There's no telling how... How powerful they even have to be. There's furthermore, this entire plate... This is switching from the lamp? Literally a two-tiered... 
Corporate dystopia, everybody. Shinra and its employees, uh, Shinra and its employees live up top, and everybody else <laughs> stuck down below. This ought to open it. Hell, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of ritual among uh, uh, among uh, starting Shinra employees to straight up shit off the plate and onto unsuspecting slum residents. I would not be surprised. I'm sure it's exactly the sort of thing the higher ups would try to keep hush hush. No good. Needs power, I think. That looks more like what we need. Control room. Let's check it out. I mean, when when the company literally owns the city, technically its employees can do whatever the hell they want, as long as as long as management doesn't have an issue with it. Cynical world running on cynical rules. I'm not this where we came from. Oops. Uh oh. Okay, good. We can't walk back. Maybe no one uses that entrance. I'm getting the feeling no one's come down here for a long time. No plate inspectors, huh? Doesn't look good. Think it works? Error. Insufficient power. <sighs> of course. Hey guys, look at this. Instructions for dealing with a power shortage. Kill the lights, and we free up power. Sun lamp operation prioritized and cargo platforms may be shut down. To power platform, disable sun lamps. Larger platforms require disabling more lamps. And of course the fourth and probably most important panel is faded to shit. Figures. Also, now that we have a good opportunity, um. Uh, there's no easy way to say this. So the news came in uh, today, maybe the day before, that Warner Media, that uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is shutting down Rooster Teeth Productions. They've been around for 21 years. Now I've I've uh, I've uh, had my criticisms of them in the past, but they di they didn't deserve this. This is wrong. And what's really messed up is that legally, it all checks out. They that's this is how corporate acquisition works. When a large media company buys a smaller company and goes through the entire acquisition process, depending on uh, the exactitudes of the contracts involved, all of the smaller company's IP, or at the very least, the lion's share, can end up belonging to the larger company. So uh, when uh, Rooster Teeth's parent company was sold by AT&T to uh, Warner Brothers before the before the Discovery merger. Oh, we got someone in. Hey Chaos. Did you hear, did you hear the news about Rooster Did you hear Did you see, did you hear the news about Rooster Teeth? No. You remember who they are, right? A, a media company. Uh, you ever heard of Red versus Blue? Yeah. 
Yeah, those guys. Um, their parent company, Warner Bros. Discovery, is now shutting them down after 21 years of operation. The this, fuck? yeah, this next season that. By a staggering coincidence, they were already planning on this next season of Red vs. Blue to be the final season in the first place. So, huh. Talk about a perfect time to get out, am I right? Mm -hmm. But basically, they'll... Uh, how do I put this? So, they'll be looking for uh, ways to monetize the Roost podcast while it's still running. But they will also be uh, they will also be looking to sell Rooster Teeth's other intellectual properties, like Ruby and Death Battle, elsewhere. And the really sad part yeah. is, and be just up. yeah, but again, because of the way that corporate acquisition works, legally they can do that. It's just another example of uh, of corporate law being out of touch with a creative society. Simple as that. We need better laws. And like I, 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 I hate to bring politics into this, but this is an election year. You want better laws? Get better legislators. Simple as that. So, I'm currently playing Dreamlight Valley. Nice. Gate and other stuff. Ten. Sun lamps. You think these are the plate suns? But I just hope, I just hope that that the folks at Roost Chief land on their feet. Furthermore, uh. I hope that whoever does end up buying the rights to Ruby does as IDW did when it got the license to uh, adapt Sonic the Hedgehog into comic books and make job offers to the previous staff. Because, yeah, when, when, the, when the Archie run of the Sonic comics ended and IDW got the license... They contacted Ian Flynn and several of the other writers and other creatives that had worked on the Archie Sonic run and gave them a job at IDW, just doing what they had been doing before. Same staff, new continuity. I hope that whoever buys the rights to Ruby and whoever buys the rights to... Thing. Yeah, that they, they make sure that they get as much of the old staff as they can. Same goes for Death Battle. Bonus points if they're both bought by the same company. Me personally, considering that, uh, considering the arrangement that Rooster Teeth had, or maybe Warner Media had with uh, Crunchyroll, that new episodes of Ruby would essentially uh, would very quickly come to Crunchyroll, even after they stopped putting them on YouTube. Like part of me, part of me is hoping Sony buys the rights, but at the same time, Sony's a large company too, so, oh boy. But there's really, that's really the only people they're going to, that's the only companies they're going to be willing to sell to anyway. Companies that have about as much money as they do. So, if it has to be sold to a large, if it has to be sold to a large company, let it be sold to the one that's already giving us our access in the first place. Sell it to Sony so they can keep it on Crunchyroll. It's just one of those things. You, you grow up loving something, and then somebody gets greedy and decides they want to go ahead and ruin it for money. What's this thing we have to the real thing? Gotta put out a sun just to open the gate. Huh? Yep. But if we go through with it, uh, welcome to being a jaded fucking millennial. Now or later, sun's going out for good when we blow the reactor. That's true. Let's go. It's just one of those things. All 
like there like I, I something I realized a while ago the reason why our generation is so heavily nostalgic is because our formative years like the first eight to ten years of our lives were relatively peaceful and comfortable for many of us the kind of peace and comfort that previous generations and later generations wouldn't find as readily especially but, but, but it's especially or rather it's the juxtaposition between that and what came with the turn of the millennium without getting into specifics basically it was one load of shit after another before we even got out of high school before we had even entered the workforce so excuse our generation for seeing uh, for seeing late stage capitalism as a crock of shit because greed 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 ruined so many things and the sheer arrogance of people to believe uh, they were above everyone else but enough about that You'd think they'd be able to time to take down a corporate empire hey, it's time to take down a corporate empire <laughs> The lamps are important. Oh, well, but when you think how much Mako it must be to keep them running. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's let's uh let's not talk about that here. Oof. Cause that's just a that's a massive can of worms. Oh I know, I was just making sure you knew, you know. Yup. That said, um do you have anything since since I'm playing Final Fantasy Seven, you have any commentary about uh environmentalism or any further commentary about uh Large corporations with way too much with way too much power. My introduction will to Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy Nine. Ah, fair enough. But I was just saying that I like to keep I like to keep any discussion of politics relevant to the game in question. And two two big uh, the two heavy political themes here are corporate overreach and environmentalism. So. Walmart for Brown Curry. Ha ha ha. I see near the top of that ladder. Hey, uh, you pretty tall that too. I'll go. Okay. Sounds familiar, Will? Hmm. Yup. But, uh, let me get your opinion on uh, a few details about the setting. So, the city of Midgar is literally a two-tiered city where the Shinra Electric Power Company, which owns the city, and... Oh. Well, chaos just... just dropped. Hopefully she'll be back. Supply confirmed. Disengaging locking mechanisms. Okay, that's that. <laughs> Great job, Cloud. So Oh boy, I think that red glow is just from the sheer heat of the lamps. Oof. Oof. Then again, it has to run pretty fucking hot to light the underside of a city. Or underbelly, anyway. Next stop, Section G. Yep. And after that, react. Oh, uh, these again. Not again. Uh, of course. Great. I'm sure those things will welcome us just as warmly as before. <laughs> Tell you what, 
The rot runs deep in this damn pizza. No shit. Don't mind us, y'all. Busted? Powered down, is my guess. Lucky us, am I right? One less thing for us to worry about. <laughs> Filling the air that we gotta breathe with this shit. Monsters sure seem to like it. What's up with that? It's like in the tunnels. They get twisted by the Mako, but it all goes back to Shinra. Canister of hazardous material. Poisons and deals 50 physical damage to enemies within range. Nice. Figures. Ha! Going for that material, weren't you? So close, and yet so far. <sighs> this path's no. But. Good now. I'm sure yeah, there's another way to get there. Thank you for Nothing finishing my sentence finish. for me, Barrett. Took the words right out of my mouth. Hmm. Hmm, depending on where it is, I might even slot it on you. Hey, let's take a moment to get our bearings. To reach Mako Reactor 5, we need to go through Section H. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't spot a connecting catwalk to Section H. Did you? Well, we could always do another lap. Go for 10, why don't you? The only other route that I can think of would be... Along the wall. Up for giving it a try? It might not work out, but it's the only idea I've got. Hmm. It's not a bad one. So we're shooting for those giant fans way over there? Okay. 
At least we've got a clear landmark to guide us. Those ventilation fans? Keeping the plates air clean by pushing the smog into the slums. Whole system's designed to make shit go down real fast. <laughs> Onto that pipe. Sure seems like that. And if I remember, if I remember correctly, there's a really you see that one that one blade that's spinning no fear, slower than the no other two? Fear. Yeah, no fear. No fear. No fear. If I remember correctly, no there's a special no materia no in there. Behind that one slow fan. Guys, uh, you know, these fans are really loud and you chickening out? Hell no. Well, I'm just worried that your pony ass is gonna get blown off the side and shit. Enough! We gotta keep moving. Yeah. Well, okay then. Follow me. Mm. Yeah, I was no gonna say this feels like one of those situations huh? where one this feels like one of those situations where you need the guard. Don't rail. look at the fan. Whatever you do. Right. Hmm. that one. Oh, look, and it's a red one, a summon. Hmm. Made it through in one piece. I think that took a couple years off my life. I mean, uh, not really. A couple seconds, maybe. Three times. <laughs> I don't know, stress can be a bitch on your body. It is not all in your head. It's your head and your body communicating. So, uh, yeah. Section your body's H gonna pick up something up in Slow that exchange. And, steady, guys. and that's our objective? The cargo platform? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one. Between the tensions, the rush of certain hormones stress can fuck your body up it. the cargo platform Biggs was talking about no matter how Let's small the cause going. I'm someone that that can have a very high stress response Error. so insufficient power uh, of course you're kidding me needs three lights worth looks like but that's that's all of them isn't it all or nothing. Let's regroup here if we get lost. Remember the H1 sign. Hmm. Right. 
Yeah. Let's see now. Closest light ought to be. That one. By the light of these magnificent lamps, we shall lead our brothers and sisters of the Undercity to a brighter future. <laughs> Say what? It's from a speech President Shinra gave, talking up the importance of the sun lamps. To mm. bright a future, my ass. Shinra's leading us down a one-way path to darkness and death. Yep. Get there then. Error. Insufficient power. We need to disable a lamp. Of course. Of course. Watch and learn. You can't teach me, squat. Got him. Can't bring it to Sorry. Enough. Can you recommend this game? Oh, absolutely. Um, especially if you're, uh, especially if you're a fan of the original. But in particular, uh, but in particular, if you're someone that's either uh, got a PlayStation Five or a PC, as either way, at some point you'll be able to play it. But the entire trilogy, apparently, like from the get-go, they planned it to be uh, PlayStation and PC only. Which, I mean, to be fair, the original launched on the PS1. In fact, it was one of the PS1's killer apps. So. But yes, I would absolutely recommend it. Also, welcome in, Builder. Um, did you hear the bad news? Please wait. That's one down. Only two more lights to go. Reinitializing intrusion prevention. System. Of course. About rooster teeth, yes. Yep. Like intrusion I said, I've I've Back had my criticisms us. of them, but they didn't deserve this. No need to fret, y'all. A few rusty mechs ain't gonna keep us from reaching the reactor. So who do you think uh, who do you think would likely end up being the buyer? when uh, WBD you know tries to sell off Ruby because uh, I had mentioned earlier on stream that personally uh, like I think they're going to sell it to someone that's got money like them I was going to say I was going to say yeah uh, sell it to Sony, 
and they'll just they'll just keep it on Crunchyroll as they've been doing. Now my question is, do you think that the folks at Crunchyroll well, I mean, they actually... Oh, I just realized Sony also owns Funimation, and they're, you know, with them folding Funimation into Crunchyroll, the thing is that they and Rooster Teeth have always had a, a pretty good dynamic, as I understand it. Not to mention, a whole bunch of the voice actors in later seasons were, uh, for lack of a better word, on loan from uh, Funimation. Yeah! Lined it up perfect! So, I can absolutely see them wait, just wait, straight up... Life. I can absolutely see... I can absolutely see Crunchyroll offering... Uh, offering the former production team jobs. And the example I gave earlier... The comparison that I made earlier was when uh, after Archie Comics lost the licensing rights for Sonic the Hedgehog Run while you can. Yeah, they look real uh, to die. the license then went to uh, IDW but when it did they hired most of the old staff especially the writers like Ian Flynn so it was basically, it was basically like, it was like, okay, instead of, instead of meet the new boss, same as the old boss, it's okay, y'all are under new management, but just keep doing what you're doing. Well, not new management, but it's like, okay, what you were doing the last, uh, what you were doing the last time you were working on this? Yeah, just keep doing that. Don't stop now. That's the attitude. I, I hope uh, like that's the attitude I hope that Crunchyroll has if if Sony ends up buying the the IP rights I hope that that's the attitude they take because quite frankly again the, there seems to be a good enough dynamic that that would pretty much be the vibe forward let's check something down below I need to get back up for a second okay yeah I can do that what we got here Another black tail. Of course. Yep. Error. Insufficient. Maybe if we turn off the light. Yep. Okay then. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, Crunchyroll is owned by... Well, here's the irony. Uh, well, no. Uh, Crunchyroll used to be owned, I think, by AT&T. And uh, at the time, sense, they also I mean, owned uh, the parent company the of sight, Rooster Joe. Teeth. Should again, at the time. You know, but again, this corporate whole, acquisition that's being that's corporate so acquisition... Stuff. You want to check they the they today? they changed hands to entirely different oh. owners. So. You think they'll miss those three plate sons? I say the real son's the only one we need. To hell with Shinra and his nightlights. Huh. Great. Ah. Uh, well, I've... Yeah, I've... Oh. Allow me. 
good. Don't overdo it. Need my help, do you? Want some more? <laughs> that thug I hear? Ooh, gotta love it. Gonna make your eyeballs pop. That's all I hear. Keep those gloves up. Sure thing, coach. <laughs> Let's see here. Mm, no, we still got a web. I still. Ah. Mouth doesn't want to behave itself, apparently. We still got a while before we get to. Okay. I might have an option here. I'm back. And I've been meaning to ask when does Eric show up? Uh shortly after this. They're heading toward uh, they're heading toward reactor number five. Shortly after the boss fight there is when uh, is when uh, Cloud and Aerith meet properly. Yeah, I don't see any way I'm getting over there right now. Oh, I think I see what it's, what it's expecting me to do, though. Is the bad guy right? Yup. Oh, excuse you, cat. Easy. Don't mess with the mouse. That is not the kind of mouse you should be messing with, kitty kitty. Sorry, Nia is being a nosy little goober. I Excuse me. Hey, excuse me. I'm working here in the clip. Ah, dang it. I just dropped my speaker. There we go. Mm. Yeah, I need that for voice chat, Uncle Head. Hey. Rude. Hey. <laughs> yep, when you're a streamer with a cat, every day is bring your kid to work day. I just got to pull the desk chair up and straighten the back panel. Nope. Nope. It's just stuck like that. Okay. I keep pausing to adjust a band aid on my thumb. Because the damn thing keeps coming loose. This is easily one of the least consequential... Uh, I wouldn't even call it a cut or a scrape. It, it, it looks like just a small bit of... Uh, like, like just enough skin got pulled off for it to bleed a little bit and then stop. I've I've had way worse than this. It's just the inconvenience of having to adjust the damn bandage so that it doesn't get infected. Hmm. Nope. Nope, we gotta go the other way. That's wrong. We're gonna need to go that way though. We're right back where we started. Hmm. Where was that last light again? All the way over there. Almost done. It's a shame we had to wander around so much. Well, no stamps here to guide us. No Jesse or Wedge to back us up either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, what should we tell Biggs? I don't want him to worry. I'd say tell him that 
Jesse messed her ankle up a little. That, that, you know, just staying off it'll be enough to deal with it. There's plenty of rest. Uh, hmm. Now there's a thought. Um, how how are they with uh? How are they with working? Let me put this. Are they likely to, at the very least, hire any of the writers and directorial staff that personally knew Monty Um? That's 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 my concern, really. Keep it together. Yes, it's my turn. Because again, like. The, I mean, the series creator has the series creator passed away well over. Like, I only uh, pretty much all I know about them is uh, that they're the ones that that funded, well, not funded, but that basically they helped they helped get season one of Has Been Hotel out the door so other than that probably the only other one of their works I'm even I even know by name would be uh, I think Adam Sandler's Uncut Gems and that's it leave it to me let's do this don't you let up now watch this Don't stop now. You ain't gonna get it. Boom. Alright. Taking over. Boom. Yeah, no, it's not going to work. Also, welcome in. Watch your health. Be sure you use potions and healing spells to regenerate HP because the game ends when all party members' HP reaches zero. You're good at this. Will you stream Persona 3 Reload? I will eventually, yes. Also, did 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 you hear about the did you hear about the DLC? They have confirmed it. They are adding Hi Shu. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did did Oh thank you for the raid, Shu! Nice. So, g g give me a quick moment to shout out. Uh, let's see here. All right, let me just get my. Let me just flip the switch on my keyboard. All right. I think this is how you do this. Ah, uh, please be right. So the shoe. Nope. Ah, oh, crap. How do I? Oh boy. Well, shit. Yeah, sorry, I forgot how to do shout outs, but but uh yeah. But thank you. Ah. But anyway, how are you doing today? I got a mixture of good and bad news today regarding some of the some of my favorite media. So that's a thing. 
So like I was saying, uh, Persona 3 Reload. Doing fine. Just chilling. Yeah. So, Persona 3 Reload. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Persona 3 Reload got a DLC announcement. They're adding uh, their own version of uh, the answer from Persona 3 Fess. MP up material. Anyway, the bad news, as I'm sure some of you have heard, and as I keep uh, <laughs> uh, talking about on the same stream to different people, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery oh. is shutting down Rooster Teeth Productions. who uh, have been in operation now for 21 years. What out, 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 out. Yep. And thankfully, thankfully, this year's season, this year's season of Red vs. Blue, they intended to be the final season. So, a small mercy there. But still, jeez. Yeah, like the thing is, uh, and, but, not only are they shutting it down, they'll be selling uh, its various intellectual properties off. Which means that shows like Ruby are going to end up, you know, probably getting sold to another company. And one of the... One of the suggestions was Crunchyroll, which, yeah, that's Sony money right there. So they would be able to afford it in all likelihood. Not to mention that Crunchyroll, well, they just folded Funimation into it. So uh, it's entirely possible that the that the good working relationship that that. Funimation and Rooster Teeth had with each other could carry over enough that uh, that they'd straight up yeah, offer bad. them uh, staff one. positions should they pick the show up. But again, Crunchyroll already had Ruby as part of some sort of licensing deal. It could go to get me some neat little goodies. Uh, sphere. Um, no, the other one's too far away for it to be that. Yep. Nope. Okay. But yeah, I, I was, as I was saying, I just hope that whoever they do, uh, Whoever they do extend that job offer to, hopefully, will at least include. Uh, will hopefully at least include uh, the writing and directorial staff that personally knew series creator Monty Um. Because, well, for those of you that, uh, for those of you who don't know, no more playing nice. Ruby series creator Monty Um died shortly after season two. Like shortly after the season two finale, way back in the day, the series creator died. He, he went in for a medical procedure, had an allergic reaction, went into a coma, and then despite all of their efforts at life support, passed away and uh, that was in the aftermath of season two. that was after season two it has been uh, like I was in college 
when uh, when the original Red trailer came out. In fact, I remember one of my college buddies actually showing me that trailer for the very first time. But... Just... Jeez. And that makes three. Enough to finally get our cargo platform moving. Better be. Okay, let's head on back to the H1 sign. Also, uh, what's everybody here's uh, familiarity with Final Fantasy VII? This injury isn't anything serious. Best thing you can do to speed her recovery is to kick Shinra ass in her stead. I know, I know. And Cloud's got a cover for Wedge too. Because um, I'm one of those people that, because of Kingdom Hearts, and because Cloud was in it, I got curious enough to at least you know read the plot summary. I, for the longest time, didn't have the money to set aside for Final Fantasy VII. But I familiarized myself with its plot, its setting, its characters. I really enjoyed the depth of the world building. Like, that's that's kind of a, a consistent through line for me and narrative media. I always wanted to play it, but never had chance to. Well, it's available on pretty much every plot. Like, the original is available on pretty much every platform. So, uh... So, you don't need a PS1 anymore to play it. You could... You can get it on Switch, you can get it on, uh, on PS4 and 5, you can get it on Xbox, you can get it on PC. You can... I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, actually, you know, I'm gonna fact check my, uh, myself before I even... before I even say this next bit. I wanna double check this. Let's see. Huh. That's surprising. Eh, probably just a, a device issue. I'm a little surprised. I'm not seeing Final Fantasy VII on the Play Store. Huh. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, me, personally, there are some games I can't stream. Uh without a PC. Um, of course. Was this the way to the cargo platform? Hmm. Hell, my number one favorite game of all time. Solo Torobo Red the Hunter for the Nintendo DS. I am not modding my DS. Hell, I don't I don't I don't hard mod any of my shit. If soft modding won't let me do what I want to do with it, then I just won't fucking do it. Auxiliary power supply confirmed. Reactivating cargo platform. That said, a reminder to my viewers. Uh, cargo platform activated. Awaiting input. Yeah, don't don't do anything illegal. Yeah. Don't do anything flat out illegal. Sorry, uh, adding on there. Uh, and if you just can't help yourself, at least try to be smart in how you do Wait, it. Wasn't this some like, for example? I only stream games I have owned. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That that's that that's uh, depending on your jurisdiction, depending on what jurisdiction some of y'all live in, that might not be legal. Which is like, uh, like copyright law to, uh, is. Well, copyright law is one of those it. things that that. I want to go grab it. You know. Yeah. I think I do. Oh, that's right. That materia. Whoops. Two of them actually. Oh wait, no. I already got the other one. But yeah, let's get this one. Where could they be going? Embarking on an adventure to find some treasure. But like I was saying, uh, so say for example, a game is no longer uh, a game is no longer commercially available. Literally, the only way you can play this thing is piracy, hypothetically. At the very least, if you're in a jurisdiction that does not actively, if 
if you are in a jurisdiction that does not actively police piracy of uh, discontinued products, be smart about it. That's all I can. That's all I. Uh, that's all I can really say. This mode active. Access maintenance terminal to complete procedure. Because. Do you prefer 2D animated from 2003 or 3D CGI from 2008? Mm, uh, sadly, I haven't watched a whole lot of either, but I did watch uh, a whole lot of the 2D animated one for sure. Only saw a little bit of the uh, 3D. But yeah, like the reason why I've got to qualify all these statements is because, well, quite frankly, to further clarify my position. Because if it's something that the copyright holder is absolutely going to take an issue with, don't do it. If it's something, if it's something that the copyright holder has has clearly signaled they don't really give a shit about, again, just be smart. The maintenance access procedure within the designated time limit. Man, what are we even doing? Oh crap. Keep your cool. No need to worry. <laughs> Don't overdo it. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I got this. It's over. Not gonna work. Are you kidding me? Your chest over there, mother fucker. I don't have a lot of time here. Access granted. Disengaging time lock. Oh, my God. Mm. Okay. What? Summoning material. Wow. What kind of badass will pop out of this one? We'll see. But yeah, like I was saying, for example, my favorite Soul to Robo, I have a physical copy. But the game itself is discontinued. Nobody else can play, like, nobody, nobody new can buy this thing. In fact, the only way I even got it was because my mother got me a copy off of eBay as a birthday present back when I was in college. And again, it's my favorite game. The only reason why uh, I even uh, why I even realized I liked it enough to want to get a copy off of eBay was that after it had been discontinued, after after they stopped printing it. Yeah, nice. But like basically after publisher Bandai Namco had made it very clear they were no longer interested in turning a profit off of this thing. I played a ROM of it. And I enjoyed it so much that I actually got uh, I actually got a physical copy of the game. A legitimate copy. Because I enjoyed the ROM that much.
And the thing is that the game's developers, CyberConnect 2, you know, the Naruto Ultimate Ninja guys, the Dot Hack folks, yeah, them. They have uh, signaled loud and clear to Bandai Namco. They will not be satisfied with a port of this thing. They want to full on remake this game and the previous game, Tail Concerto. Hear that, guys? It's the reactor colonists. Back in the nest saying, bring it on, Avalanche. Personally, I think that there ought to be a law. That I think there ought to be a law where copyright holders, uh, where copyright holders uh, of of discontinued work have to signal whether or not they intend on it being available by other means down the line. Unfortunately, and, and again, this is the part where, where I have to bring the law and thus politics into the equation. We need better laws. You want better laws? Get better legislators. This is an election year. If you're not satisfied with the laws that we have, look at the, like, look at the stances of the candidates and vote based on that. Vote for your legislators based on their legislative history and agenda. Simple as that. They, if they have a proven record, follow that. I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for. I'm just telling you some things you should probably look out for. Approach it, it just, I would say, me personally, I would approach it from a goal-oriented standpoint. In this case, the goal being getting the laws I want passed, passed. Sorry if I uh, turned anybody off with uh, with all that though. Okay, Big should be waiting for us. One of the things, it's one of the things you have to be careful about. I'm a freaking shocked you haven't seen Clone Wars. It's the Avatar of Star Wars. I am aware, but you know, part of my uh, like part of my engagement uh, trouble with Star Wars. How do I put this? Um. Actually, I'm not even entirely sure why I ended up dropping off. It was probably because, you know, in the aftermath of Revenge of the Sith, I kind of just slowly drifted away from it. Like it's one of those. It's one of those that that I absolutely appreciate the cultural value for sure. Anytime I see anything with Darth Vader, I'm like, oh, hey, cool. You'd be good at it. But I wonder. I just, uh, for some reason, some part of me just has difficulty getting into uh, anything outside of the core films anymore. Hell, I speaking of which, I haven't even watched the the sequel trilogy. I just, the, I, something in me is just disengaged at this point. I think part of it is that uh, that. I think part of it is uh, some burnout with extended media. Hey, the sequel trilogy isn't worth it, honestly. So I've heard. But uh, but as for uh, as for Clone Wars, I think it's more that. Oh. Mercy. Whoa. Wait. I think it's wow. it's more that yeah. Here's Jesse and Wedge. I think it's more that when there's so much supplemental content for a film series, it like you have to get through the entire show, and I don't want to go at it like it's an obligation. And every time, 
every time I, uh, every time I'm considering watching it, it feels like I'm doing so out of obligation. And I don't know how to get out of that trap. So, I'll just have to watch it when the motivation hits me naturally. Report. Topside's going nuts after some terrorists. It's only been train. over 20 freaking nice years. It's only here. been over 20 years so since the no 2D one, yeah. <laughs> you magnificent son of a bitch. Bring it in. <laughs> so, where are the others? Jesse got hurt and couldn't make it. Bad? Not so bad she couldn't rope in this guy. Thanks for stepping up. It's a job. Worked out pretty good. You picking that train you did. While Shinra scours Sector 4, you can waltz right on into Sector 5. Ha. It's a bit of a squeeze, but it ought to get you where you need to go. Little dark and foreboding for my taste. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, and you'll be needing your grappling guns, of course. Ah. All set. Classic. Ready to take on the Ooh. world and then some. Make sure everyone gets clear, okay? Will do. New weapon for Barrett. Keep these grappling guns close. Secure them to your belt or whatever so you don't lose them. When mm -hmm. we're done, we'll be using these babies. Why are to RPG them parties safe? always limited to four? All of us. Efficiency. Got it. Not always, though. Uh, case in point, Xenoblade 3 gives you a total of uh, seven playable party members. Six, or, or sorry, seven party members, six of them playable. So six, six, you know, mainstay characters and a seventh slot for hero characters. Which you unlock as you progress through the story. But the main six are there from pretty much chapter one onward. That's it. That's smile, y'all are on camera. Reeks of Marco. Looks like we made it. Layout's the same as Reactor 1. Yeah. We're near Mako storage. Let's move. I think I'll be saving right before the boss fight, though. Actually, no, nah, it's... Mm. Fuck it. Let's see here. Not seeing a way down. Hmm. Here, maybe? Well, now, that could work. I'm next. Stick this big boy on us, we'd be screwed six ways from Sunday. Mechanized units like these were designed to take out giant monsters. Probably a new prototype. If they do decide to deploy it, then our best bet would be to run like hell. Oof. Then let's hope he sleeps through the explosion. Huh. Not 
you won't. Yes. Almost there. The smell. It takes me back. Not worth my time. No holding back. Let's finish this. Oh yeah. Let's move, move, move. Eat so shit. Not again. Sephiroth. Soldiers. Maka. Uh oh. Shinra. Ah, hold on. Hmm. So that was my ma calling a moment ago. So we might have to cut it here in a moment. Tifa. If it lets me. What? Yep.
going to save here. And we're going to see who is available to raid. Let's see here. Uh, oh, it looks like DW is still on, so we're going to be raiding Demon Werewolf. So... Uh, raid channel... Keyboard on... Demon Werewolf. And uh, be sure to say hi. Uh, but until next time, this is the Wilhelm Starton, rating and signing off. Don't touch that dial. <laughs>